What do you do when you're contested and really committed to a composition like rerolling? Do you level? Do you roll really hard anyways and take the units? Do you save your gold? Or do you just rage and type up a twit longer? Well, in this episode of Into Deep, we go into a tournament game played by Huanne, many who consider to be the goat of China and possibly the goat of all of TFT. He goes into all the highs and lows of TFT while keeping a cool head and maybe even having a chuckle when he finds out just how contested he is. Juan Mei is currently competing in the Huya Qualifier for TOC Regionals. TOC Regional Finals is China Regionals, which is a huge prize pool. It's $275,000. That's right, almost 300 grand for a TFT tournament. So it's super high stakes to be able to qualify and go really far. And this is a competition specifically for the Huya platform, which is the equivalent of, you know, Twitch or YouTube in the West. The portal is Placidium Library. And Placidium Library just basically gives you the opportunity to pad whatever vertical or potentially like a really powerful emblem interaction on a champion that can be really good and take you over the top so a lot of times people are looking at plus one sorcerer go for the big sorcerers maybe good rogue or a gunner setup maybe even noxus in fact if you type in things like the meta tft app and go into the portal section i typed in placidium library you can see the recommended compositions based on average placement noxus gunners void sorcerers bruisers there's just a lot of different opportunities for you to explore what you really think makes sense for your spot but remember most importantly is to make sure it makes sense based off your opener if you commit to something like sorcerers but you get like bows that Juan May has it's, it's kind of awkward to make that work unless you're willing to convert some of those bow items be really patient to get bis on something else just be careful with that sometimes your items don't really line up with this so if you want to force say sorcerers but you get like a bow opener that Juan May has it's gonna be kind of awkward sometimes especially with the last whisper opener okay a gold opener for Juan May so he's gonna be a little bit more reroll centric let's go ahead and pause here and analyze what the augments can offer us so we mentioned sorcerers is potentially pretty powerful on Placidium library because plus two meaning getting two emblems or a sorcerer heart plus another opportunity to get a sorcerer in the field is really strong because it helps you go from the normal six to eight breakpoint and get a powerful vertical however his items are really bad for sorcerers he starts off with the equivalent of a last whisper and so he has to wait for a long time to convert things like this bow to potentially a Nash's tooth which is not even necessarily the best item that you can make for sorcerers even though it's playable and then you would take this glove and convert it to a item like guard breaker or jewel gauntlet but even then that means that you have to wait an entire stage in order to get two playable items and so this is a really awkward spot in general for sorcerers taking a look at magic wand magic wand pushes him towards an AP direction which he could actually play around since he has things like Malzahar and the Cassiopeia the thing about magic wand is it doesn't give him enough direction of what you should commit to and with this portal placidium library is asking you to pick your direction somewhat early so that way you know what emblem you want off that scroll so the only real option here that i'm looking at is portable forge i'm willing to reroll a couple of these options though so let's see what he chooses to do so he rerolls the middle and he gets offered martyr martyr is really good late game when your units are fully stacked and you have a bunch of upgrades and 10 percent healing just means a lot more for units that have a lot of items and you can really make use of that 10 percent hp especially if you're playing big traits with a lot of hp like bruiser for example which could be really really good with martyr in the early game is a little bit awkward to use so i would say martyr is a lot weaker at stage two than it is uh later in the game but you could justify it if he wants to reroll say chogath and renekton for example on May scouts around and he sees that there's a good amount of people trying to play AP and the worst part about committing to a line is you pick something like Sorcerer's Crest and then you recognize that maybe one or two other people are also going to do it so you have this inevitable train wreck coming where you know three of you are going to be fighting for those same units it's not worth it he rerolls and sees gargantuan resolve which pushes him pretty much to just one or two builds which is to play around challengers with the gargantuan resolve stacks on things like Fiora and potentially Nasus and Aatrox or you go for a reroll centric titans user like Rek'Sai which is not very powerful on this portal in particular and so Juan May goes for the portable forge and now the portable forge gives him eternal winter or gold collector and the cool thing is he has this ash on the bench and so if he does want to actually play around the the ash with last whisper and gold collector that's something you can slam now this brings us to another important tip in TFT items multiply off each other so if you're able to build another powerful item in tandem with an artifact that you can pick right right now that's really huge so if you pick eternal winter if you have something defensive with it like a war mogs or stone play gargoyle that's a reason to potentially go into it but Juan May has the ash and the last whisper that he can slam with the gold collector that means that he can potentially go for this gold collector as well and start farming some gold while being able to lean into what makes it really powerful which is that if you have vanquishers vanquishers with last whisper and that gold collector can provide a lot of damage because you get that guaranteed crit on the ability 
Oh my god, wait a second. I thought Juanme was gonna play a stage two and try to kill units. He's actually just playing open for it and hard committing to Ash. And this is a strategy that Juanme is particularly really powerful at, which is he's willing to trade a lot of his life in order to get a big amount of economy and roll down and spike later in the game. This is a type of strategy that I'd only recommend for people who are really familiar. Hold on a second. We just scouted and you saw another guy commit to Vanquisher Emblem off their 2-1 augment and they have an ash too so it looks like Juan Mei is actually contested which is uh, pretty unfortunate we talked about how he scouted to specifically try to avoid the who is going to contest him potentially in sorcerers his items weren't even good for it and now he looks and he sees someone else has a vanquisher emblem which is going to be problematic so now he's taking a unconventional line playing for things like Ionia Ash is not very common. In fact, it's something that most people who try in the West uh, do not find success with it and think it sucks. So now Juan May's game plan has to shift a little bit, which is now he knows that he's contested and it's on a tier two composition. It's going to be a little bit awkward moving forward. So he's trying to keep tabs on what the other contesting player is doing and knows that he can get away playing a couple of units to potentially snipe one or two champions to preserve HP. It's not like Jace and Cho are particularly really good for him and he's holding on to these units. It's more that he thinks that if he can play just a couple of units, maybe he can preserve that two HP every single round, which adds up over time. So we're at the carousel and Juan May immediately identifies that there's a sword on an ash. Now he even has a really good component for it because swords even leans into what the vanquishers want to do because you want to itemize more than one champion. So this is a really good leg up over the other players that are also contesting him. He sees a double set shop, which actually leans into it because if you're going to play around Ionia Emblem on the Ash, set ends up being your primary frontliner because you want to reroll based on the same cost. And so if you're picking Ashes at level six and it's a tier two unit, set also ends up being one of the ideal two costs that you end up rolling for as well. The only thing is that in order to get it, he has to sacrifice one gold. And if he buys both of these sets, he also has a possibility that he wins a fight by accident. So he might want a gold collector see if you can farm one gold and if he's able to farm that one gold that might be the ability for him to hold on to the set unfortunately it looks like he loses so he's not able to get it he locks for the shop which is actually a really rare play that you're supposed to do but this is the exact kind of unit that he wants anyways so to get multiple copies of set especially if he's contested and knows that there's other people that want to play things like the vanquisher lines he might need to do something desperate like lock this set. However, I think it's in his best interest to not actually buy this set just yet. You want to buy it after the round has started. So that way you can play a three unit board and almost guarantee that you can lose versus the other players. The other player right now has Ash 2 and a Deathblade Slam. So it's very unlikely that he ends up winning, but that player might replace the Ash with the weak units on the board. And as you see, he scouted to make sure that was going to be the case. Lo and behold, queues up into the player and is now rewarded for not buying that second set because he is going to lose his fight with bad positioning. That's intentional. So this is a really good fight, guaranteeing that he loses through bad positioning and only playing three units. And now has ended the lose streak of his opponent. So this is a really good outcome from him. And now, even though he's at 61 HP, that's pretty low. He has successfully built up his economy in a really good spot. And he also natural an Ash 2, which is really, really good. Levels here so that he can guarantee beat the Krugs. Definitely make sure to not lose the Krugs. This is a very, very important skill. And so the real key interval is to roll at 6. So the big question here for Juan Mei is how much is he going to roll at 6? Because he is going to have to roll at 3, 2 and level at the interval that a lot of people usually do. But if he dips too low, it's going to take a while to recover his economy. So Juan Mei here has to think about when he goes to 6 and how much he's going to roll. If he's going to roll at 3-2, he is going to have to figure out like when he's going to be able to stop rolling and be very stable. But look at this, actually. He levels off Cadence, finds his Zaya at 6. Okay, wow. So this might be a world championship difference. This guy is a former world champion in set 5. That could be one ex potential explanation. His count is just a little bit luckier. But the other side of it is that he wanted to get to 6 and roll before the other player. This is actually a really interesting uh, choice because... A lot of other people would not be rolling until they get to the natural interval. But Juan May knows that if he's contested, he wants first look at some of these other champions that is going to be contested. 
So he finds his Zaya and he stops. He also had the opportunity of rolling until he hit set two or other really good supportive units. Like maybe if he plays multiple Vanquishers with finding things like the Jin and the Darius, that also could have been a potential place to stop. Okay, let's pause here and look at these augments. So we got Sleight of Hand, Harm Assist, and Scoped Weapons. Sleight of Hand is actually not that bad because the extra HP is really nice as well as attack speed, but Thieves Gloves ends up being a pretty useful item on Vanquishers because you give them a bunch of base crit, which is really good. So that way with the Vanquisher trait, it's almost like they have a ton of chance to get all those critical shreds going. He also has a glove on the bench, so you could potentially make a second pair of Thieves Gloves. And that's where Sleight of Hand gets much better because because you have it on multiple champions. That being said, he already has two Ash items and he's going to go for an Ioni Emblem. So his primary carrier is not going to be utilizing things like Sleight of Hand. And also Sleight of Hand is a lot more tempo oriented when he's going to be playing more reroll centric. Usually play Thieves Gloves and then ladder up to tier three, tier four units, but he's going to be staying on tier two units the whole time. It's going to be a little bit weaker in this spot. I don't hate that choice though. Armistice is okay. It gives him a lot of combat power to potentially draw out the fight and sustain. Anquishers are a lot more burst oriented though. So you actually want Want things that just give you straight up damage so that way you can go ahead and kill the, whatever you're attacking and go for crits think of it like vanquishers are assassins but you just don't jump to the back you get a bunch of crit chance as well as crit damage and so it's a really important way for you to amplify it through base stats in order to get that crit multiplier going scope weapons is actually reasonable is if you play around neela as well as part of your vanquisher package but it'd be purely to help boost neela and not necessarily ash it's a little bit on the weaker side in my opinion a reroll at least harm assist and he's thinking about sleight of hand and he passes you have my sword and parting gifts and this is a nod specifically to what we talked about with vanquishers and thieves gloves and so he thinks that this is a potential really good opportunity to combo that crit chance with the vanquishers and now he's rolling again pretty heavily and goes to 10 until he feels like he's really stable he finds another Zaya pair, which is very, very fortunate. And he has an opportunity to potentially even find that Zaya 2 up the carousel. Rolls again and sees a Neela. So now he has four Vanquisher and the Ionia. So a very good and fortunate series of events. And look, man, it's in tournament situation. You want to be high rolling if you can. Okay, so this spot is pretty high roll. Now you can play for a second Thief's Gloves onto the Neela as well. And overall, this is just looking like this man's pretty safe right now for stage three. The entire goal of why he's rolling is so that he can have a really strong stage three. Oh my goodness, he loses anyways up against the person that hit Aphelio. So this lobby is starting to get kind of crazy. A lot of people are hitting the four costs that are really good. So even though Juan may hit the units that he's looking for, a lot of people are really strong. And it's wild because he needed to stabilize because he lost so much HP early. So trading more HP is not what he wants to do. Has an ability to go for Warwick 2, which would be an upgrade over the Nautilus. But the problem is if he makes his Warwick 2, it's going to be hard to recover his economy. So he might be in a spot where he feels like it's not worth it. He needs to hold on to Karma and to that Irelia. So if he makes Warwick 2 and plays the Warwick over the Nautilus and loses, he has to sell one of these Ionia units to make up that gold, which is not worth it. So it looks like he sells the Warwick and goes back to the drawing board. And someone else has Zaya as well. So some way, somehow, there are three people trying to play the line in this lobby, which the spot keeps wavering between being very fortunate to being very unfortunate. He's going up against somebody who has Zaya as well. So somehow he's three-way contested him plus the vanquisher emblem starter plus this person is just holding a zaya i'm not so sure why zaya is all of a sudden so popular but it has gone from a really good start to a really unfortunate series of events where he's contested but he did hit some of the important units he has a zaya on the carousel he can go for zaya too but that's not a good item because he already has a tier and this is really painful for him because he really wanted to be able to take that zaya but you can't just justify tiers and this brings us to another important tip don't just take the unit off the carousel because it completes a two star if the item doesn't make sense for you tier is one of the weakest components that you could possibly make in vanquisher because it does not matter how much mana you have and the tier items the only one they can really justify is hand of justice or something that you can play for your front line May now is at 3-5 and he has a Placidium Library now going for the Ioni Emblem. It goes on Ash. He does have six Ioni ready to go as well, just putting in the Karma and taking out things like the Nautilus. And he's playing for Stone Plate onto the set, recognizing that he's going to reroll the set and the Ash, and he wants this set to be able to tank a lot. And this is actually really important for him to recognize that item prioritization. He wants to be able to guarantee really good items, and he doesn't need things like that extra tier for that Zaya 2. 
going up against a player that is relatively weak. So this is actually a really nice matchup for us. We're able to get this free win and we need to focus on rebuilding our economy and getting that Ash 3. Another interesting question will be, if he just has Ash 3 and nothing else, is he willing to move up and potentially like replace the set? He's looking and see someone else, you know, going for that set 3 and that Gen 3 and that Ash 3. So it's going to be harder for him to hit that set 3. So he might have to just settle only for Ash 3 and nothing else. And this is a way that you adapt your game plan. If it's just not working out and you want to reroll multiple units, just focus on the most important unit if you're contested and then go ahead and move up levels and try to play around higher quality synergies. And apparently everybody has set two, so it's going to be even more rare for him to come across at this lobby. This person has a set two, even has a Shen. He eventually wants to play Shen and get to that six Ionia. The nice thing though is at least he's farming gold and he won. So all things considering a pretty good stage three, he won four out of five and he stabilized his health, which is the most important thing here another set and at this point we just roll to 50 this is slow rolling we're trying to make sure to see if we can <laughs> we're trying to see if we can find the strongest board that we can play going to stage four hits a zaya two on six all right so now we went from kind of a really good start to finding out that we're contested twice to hitting things like zaya two on six so it ends up being quite stable so this should be quite stable for him Finds an opportunity to make potentially a redemption. You want to keep continue stacking things like that set two, keep them alive. Healing in general is really good for set. So redemption is really high value. If he wants to go for that, you can also try to justify a gun blade. The more you're healing that set, the more value you're getting off of those resistances. That being said, one of the stronger items you can also make is guard breaker as well for an opportunity to get additional crit chance and a lot more damage. Oh, I wasn't expecting this going for things like Archangels onto the Shen. That's a pretty unusual choice. This is because Shen actually scales really well off of ability power. So if you're able to have him be a secondary tank, which is funny because he's usually the primary in Ionia, you can have him get really big high value shields. And this is because he's trying to find ways to kill components that aren't relevant to his composition. Most of Vanquishers deal physical damage, and so finding ways to use the tiers and the rods are going to be really crucial. So it ends up being that Archangel isn't one of the best items, but it's a useful item for him to put right now that can have impact. Otherwise, those components sit on the bench until the end of the stage. So let's look at these last augment choices here. We got Return on Investment, which says if you roll 18 times, you get a Tactician's Crown. Healing Rubs is really good for keeping your units that are sustained into the fight. It's really, really good for like melee champ in particular because the melee champions take a lot of damage a little bit less good in something like vanquishers but still decent jewel lotus is actually kind of awkward because you already get the ability to crit just by playing vanquishers but it's good for the other non-vanquisher units that could potentially benefit off of it extra crit chance is also not completely useless either i would definitely say that healing orbs seems to be one of the better ones that you can pick here just because it gives them actual combat strength but he might reroll options and pick something else Oh, Stolen Vitality. Okay, Stolen Vitality is not only really good because of the augment that synergizes with his trait, but also because it gives him an Ash. And so this guy is full on high rolling at this point. But hey, I mean, that's like what you got to do in order to win some of these contested lobbies. You got to have things fall your way. So another thing that I want to highlight is Juan May is now level to seven and is now trying to tie in a bunch of important synergies into his composition. This is also a nod to the fact that he's contested. He knows that it's going to be unlikely that he's able to hit Ash 3 if he just keeps rolling at six, even though the best odds to hit set three and Ash 3 is at six. Going to seven ties in the synergies and gets that very important two juggernaut in onto that set which might lead you to another question, which is, hey, what if I like hit like a Neela? Should I put that in over the Darius? Because Neela's a tier four unit. Darius is a tier three unit. Darius also doesn't do anything. That guy is just an actual mascot or a synergy bot. Darius is the ultimate victory cigar, essentially, right now in this composition. But the thing is, if Set dies, we die. He's the entire front line with Shen potentially providing some backup shields. And so it's going to be important for him to lean into protecting that Ash. Because if you're able to keep that front line at bay, Ash will be able to shoot everything and over time whittle down the opponents. In this case, uh, I'm pretty sure that he's going to stick with this Set and this Darius for a while. The exception might be that if he hits Neela too, and then he might end up replacing that Darius one. He's also saying this extra glove in case he gets these gloves number two, which I think is really good. He's going up against Cho, which actually could be kind of a hard matchup usually, but thankfully he has this Zaya 2, which is really good at single target DPS. And this is partially what makes the team of Zaya and Ash quite good, 
even with Jin, is because Zai and Jin help provide that single target burst, and Ash is there to provide AoE, so it doesn't feel like you use all of your damage on only one or two targets, and then you got no other ammo. Really good balance. So this brings us to another important concept, which is diversify the way your carries are dealing damage. A lot of times, if you just have people do the same exact role, like two people doing single target damage or two people doing AoE damage, you might struggle with different types of defensive front lines. If you have a bunch of AoE, but no single target damage, super tanks like Cho'Gath or even Mech from the previous sets is going to be really difficult to deal with, but you can kill their backline potentially and try to wail them down. Not very consistent. If you have too much single target damage, you just might get overwhelmed by sheer numbers. Think about how if you use all of your burst to execute with Cassante, but there's still six other units, you're going to struggle to deal with all of them. And so having a little bit of column A and column B ends up having really good synergy with each other. One may scouts around to see if he needs to reposition because he actually hasn't really been moving around very much. The interesting thing about his positioning as well is he's almost isolating the Ash away from the clump. So if you notice that there's like a Jarvan, for example, this Jarvan is attacking the Ash, but he's going to jump away from the Ash because the clump is towards the middle. And so he's trying to purposely make sure that his carries cannot get targeted by things like AoE CC that will lock him down. And at this point, the game plan is straightforward. He just waits for the weaker Ash players to die. The other players at 12 HP racks up his resources. He doesn't have to go to level eight, although he has the option to do so. And it's going to be very, very patient moving forward. Once that Ash player dies, they get reinserted into the pool. He can save his gold. So even rolling here, even though he has 68, he could roll to 50. It's not that important. He can actually just wait a couple of rounds. Sometimes it doesn't work, though. You end up saving your gold for a couple of rounds, and then people don't die for like two, three rounds, and you're taking some losses. In those situations, you should consider rolling down. Guanmei just needs to end this with a really good streak, and he's going up against the person that's contesting him. An opportunity to deal that lethal damage, and then start rolling immediately after. Stage 4 doesn't provide the most amount of damage. It looks like he only wins by 2 units, so this person ends up surviving just barely 4 HP. But I still like the hesitation to not roll here, and now all that person has to do is lose one time, and those Ashes are back in the pool alongside those sets. And the odds at 7 are still not even that bad. It's 30%, which is pretty reasonable if you think about like how much gold that you're able to roll. So Hanmei just has to be patient. He could think about going to level 8, but then he reduces his chance of hitting Ash even further. Not to mention that he still wants to roll for more than just Ash. He wants to roll for that set if possible and maybe even hit things like that Darius itemization wise no second copy of these gloves but we can make defensive item here for set somehow if you go for crown guard for example that's an item that is pretty good and scales off of HP so it could be decent for him to stall you can also look for anti-heal options with things like Morello for example which could potentially be really good and so he commits to Last Whisper and Deathblade and Morello. So this is actually kind of unfortunate that he doesn't have a third item for set. So his front line is a little bit on the weaker side. But Last Whisper is actually really nice because it provides him some armor sundering, which is really good for him to get past those really tanky front lines. Jin is actually not the best holder of Last Whisper. If he didn't have Thief's Gloves onto the Zaya, he would actually prefer to put Last Whisper on that Zaya because every one of her feathers that fans across will end up applying that Last Whisper versus it's based off whoever Jin is aiming at that you'll get that armor sundering. But he has that Thief's Glove, so he has no choice. The contester is not dead, and this is one of those situations. He's even smiling right now. He's holding so much gold because he is ready to send, man. And he just needs this one contester to die. If he takes another bad loss, he might have to just abandon that plan and roll to preserve his HP to get to that top four because at this point, he might be taking too many losses and bleeding too much HP to feel comfortable spending all that gold in one turn because there is a time limit. So if you end up having like 130 gold or something like that, but only one life, can you realistically spend that much gold and be able to hit? Thankfully, that guy has died. So now he's rolling during the end of the round so he can spend some of his gold. Looks like he hits that Darius 2, Karma, and that extra set. Very smart use of time. We talked about how, are you able to actually spend all that gold? He wants to spend some of his downtime to be able to get to it. Oh my god, the Ash player died and we rolled, what, 40 gold and haven't found more than one Ash? Okay, now we're one Ash off. Trying to replace Karma instead, and there it is. 
Ash 3, Morello can get transferred to that Karma. Morello, by the way, on Irelia, I didn't talk about it, but it might look a little bit weird. Morello has recently been changed at the end of the previous set to now apply on all sources of damage, whether physical or magic. Now with the Ash 3, it looks like we are chilling and cruising. Eventually, you want to do get to things like Ari as well, and that can help us clean up the rest of these fights. Now we want to potentially push levels as well. Chasing set three is pretty hard, although there is a set with a Bramble Vest that's pretty close to ideal. Does not get it. We look for another item for her set like a gauge. The steric gauge ends up being a bootleg way to get some HP. It's not very good tank item, but hey, sometimes you just got to get a third item on that frontliner. So, the, you know, the thing about this game that's pretty interesting is that Juanme has to settle for okay, but not like best in slot. He's also really intelligently played around some of his augments and the other things that have been given to him. And of course, he also got lucky by doing things like hitting that Zaya too, but also not getting baited by like the 10 copies of Neos that he's seen so far. Going up against the Cho again, this time we have Last Whisper to help pierce through that Bramble Vest, but our opponent is now fully online with what looks like to be six bruisers with that scion and getting double trouble cho but still not going to be strong enough to withstand against the pressure ash has the giant slayer and that gold collector meaning that the execution range is so big because of the extra damage that you get and that gold collector ends up getting a lot of value here Juanme is still picking up extra sets not rushing to eight i wonder if he's actually going to roll for set three this is a spot where you could have justified potentially skipping set three moving these items onto, say, a Shen 2 or a different units that will tank entirely. Say, for example, he could have put items on Nasus and went to level 8 instead. But he's just trying to stick to his guns and evaluate based off of the fight flow. This is something that you could do because he has multiple lives. He's at 40, and he has the ability to kind of evaluate based off his team's performance and not rush things. And now just look at this Ash pop off. The itemization has paid off. His patience has paid off and all of his decisions have culminated to him into a top four. Now, it looks like he's going to do better than that. He's trying to aim to see if he can go for top two or better, maybe even win this lobby. But it's going to be difficult because some people have things like challengers with Aatrox 2 and a couple of other really powerful champions. So let's see what he does at eight. I don't think Juanme can go to level nine from this spot because I think the game will be over by the middle of stage six. And at best, he might be able to go to nine and play like a single unit. Oh, another set. So now he's really incentivized to roll. Finds an Ari. So Ari can immediately go in. Hit set three and two rolls at eight. All right, man. This guy is just the goat. I don't even know what to say, man. If you were wondering how he won world championships, it's a mixture of really good play and really high roll moments like this. Hits another Zaya too, which is really interesting. Just playing another copy of Zaya. Maybe can itemize her as well. Morello, Archangels, onto that Ari, which I really like. And by the way, sold that extra copy of Shen, so that way he could remake Shen and get the Archangels onto Ari. Really good heads up play to show how to rent a certain unit like Shen and put an item on him so that's in play. And then later on, ladder it into a unit like Ari and get maximum value based off good items. Juanmei now just saw the second place like a pretty big loss. If you can hit Ari too, I'm pretty sure this game is over. Also has a double Gangplank in his shop. Gangplank's really good if he needs extra fights against CC so that way he can get that big ship and potentially protect his units from getting Jarvaned. Hits an Ari too. And the high roll is complete. Looking around and seeing whether or not he can close this game. Listen, I know a lot of comps are going to be like, well, he's just high rolling. Like, even I can do that. But in reality, this comp is usually playing for like a solid second or third at best. In order to win a lobby, you're going to need to get very lucky. And he ends up losing anyways to the challenger players because things like the Kaisa and the Fiora are so good at dealing with this front line and potentially sniping that back line. And that HS2 is menacing as well. Even despite all this, is he even going to be able to go first from here? I mean, it just goes to show you that even though things are painting out pretty well, it's not a smooth sailing the entire time. Ooh, one thing I want to highlight, let's pause here and look at the positioning. Wanmei is specifically trying to maximize surface area of Ash's ability by having her have these gaps in the front line in order to have maximum surface area for the her volley to hit the back line because all these units are going to walk over towards the left side set's going to walk left towards his cho both the opposing cho and the sign from the back line are going to 
hit this area in the top center. So that means that Ash might be able to even hit things like the Cassio and the Milio with her volley, which is really big because you want her to get that crit damage to apply to that back line. Also, because of the way that's positioned, he should be drawing enough aggression to get value off of the stone plate. And everything is surrounded. Okay, Ash, unfortunately, is aiming at the Scion instead. And so therefore, only hitting the Cassio in the back. But it was a very clever idea and it almost worked out perfectly and he gets the win anyways. So looks like uh, Juan May's brilliant idea was somewhat effective, but you know, it's cool that he actually thought of some really interesting positioning tricks in the late game to potentially have fight swing his way. You can justify having another item for backline or even go for frontline item. Redemption is good to help heal his, his Shen, but right now his Shen with no items is actually not that reliable of a unit. And now we roll down to see if we can hit Zaya 3. That's our win condition to try and close it out. Uh, can we find Zaya 3? Okay, unfortunately not. This other person is still streaking. Very scary. Uh, now he's going for more generic positioning because he knows that the way that the challenger player wants to position is to have Fiora get a quick reset. So he's trying to have uh, all these units batched together to be stronger and focus fire and looks like the re burst is through and juan may is going to clean it up and he gets the win uh and the vod cut out right there so all right so that's a little bit of an abrupt ending but hope you guys learned a lot from all the small things the big thing that juan may did and showed how to play the game from multiple perspectives from playing an underplayed reroll composition to playing contested and being patient to having somewhat of an awkward item situation but making the best of it Juan May truly had the highs and lows of TFT all in one game and showed you why he is one of the best, if not the greatest TFT player so far in our young history. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If there's anything that I missed about Juan May's play, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.